Hey, how's it going everyone? GC Performance here back with another video and today we're taking a look at this beautiful time bicycle that I just recently did a video on where I spoke about how this customer went ahead and bought pretty much uh, that a lot of YouTube influencers have recommended in the past. Time being won by Hamdini and Mapdeck for their uh, superior quality control and also how good the bicycle frames are made. The coefficient handlebar, the Hambini bottom bracket, and then me built by GC Performance, and also the Craft Racing Wheels uh, by China Cycling. But after I did that video, when I put this whole bicycle together, ran the lines, everything like that, um, and talked about the pain in the butt it was for this coefficient handlebar, uh, we got everything ran. And then when I do this, these videos sometimes, sometimes I'll just leave the brakes and everything loose uh, just for that sake. But when I want to go ahead and touch up everything because the customer's coming to look at it, uh, I found a little thing on here that was uh, very fun. So I'm going to show you guys real quick. So on here for this front disc brake, if we take a look at it, the bottom bolt is completely tight on that front disc brake mount. And we can see right there, it doesn't look like there's a gap between the carbon. It looks like almost the fork itself is touching that carbon fiber. Right here in this area, you can see it's very close on that bracket. And you can see right here the separation between the mounting point and here. So when you go ahead and put a bolt inside of this area right here, it clamps this down and makes it impossible to get rid of disc brake rub on this front disc brake rotor. And that was the thing. This was tight, I went ahead and did the video. I was like, oh, okay, it's probably rubbing. I just need to adjust it when it gets here. But the more I looked at it, I was like, maybe we need to resurface the, uh, the area, the contact points for where the actual bolts meet on the actual bicycle. But no, at further inspection, I kept on noticing that every single time you would tighten up this mount, there would be no adjustment and no room to move the caliper back and forth, and there will always be a disc brake rub here. So, let me show you what you guys did. And this is not a reaming video. This is not a pitchfork to time and everything like that, and, and uh, you know, showing off like, oh, this is horrible con quality control and stuff like that. It's just ironic that a company with such great quality control and always gets praised about by some of the best mechanics and engineers out there for quality control, the first time that I actually built from scratch has an issue or a, a manufacturing defect in here. So this is what it looks like when you loosen up the bolt a little bit and you can see now we have full contact on top of that uh, service point for that brake or brake bolt right there. So I put about, this is a SRAM brake adapter. I put a Shimano brake adapter on there. I also have like three or four of them just to make sure. I wanna make sure that this mount itself was flat. But as we see when we remove this bolt on here, you can even see it. And I noticed it from the beginning, but I just figured Hey, why not? And people might ask me, GC Performance, why didn't you go ahead and squeeze the brakes from the get-go? Or why didn't you check this out before you ran the lines through the handlebar? When you're putting together a bicycle and you run everything, you typically leave the front disc brake caliper loose on here. You mount it to the fork, but then you leave it loose when you're running the cables through so that we have slack and everything like that. You don't tighten it down all the way. Um, and then you actually, once you actually pair the, the hose to the actual shifter itself, and then you go ahead and get everything dialed in and then you squeeze the brakes and everything like that. By that time, everything's ran and yeah. So you can even see right here, it has this little bulge on this carbon fiber. It looks like where excess carbon just kind of dripped down right here. And that's the issue right there. So before I did anything, I notified the customer to let them know the situation. And I said, hey, I have a fix for this and I recommend my situation, which I'll tell you guys in a second. Um, and again, like I mentioned before, this is not a pitchfork after this company um, and saying, oh, they have the crappiest quality control, yada, yada, yada. Everything else on this bicycle is absolutely beautiful. I first reached out to Hambini just to make sure that it wasn't just something me. I said, hey, is there a proprietary or specific front disc brake mount uh, bracket that I need to work with this brake caliper on here? He said, no, anyone will work. Cool. I also reached out to Time on Instagram and they answered me right away without having any previous contact um, and I just said, hey guys, and they responded right away and said, hey, what's up? I said, hey, is there a specific issue or something that I should be using with this? They said, no, and I sent them a picture of what was going on. And they said, ooh, it looks like it's a manufactured defect, but you could probably just sand this off, this excess amount of carbon right here, and then finish off with a clear polish as well. And I was like, okay, cool. But they said, yeah, just let us know if you need help or anything like that. And I also recommend to the customer, I said, hey, you have two options, either I can try and fix this, or uh, I said, I have a solution for it, or two, just contact time, I'm sure they'll send you out fork, no questions asked, which they seemed eager to help. So that's very nice of them. But my solution was this. Now it's not the most sexy, it's not the most engineering, but this is a Shimano disc brake adapter right here. Now we're running 140s and basically 
what it looks like is like this. So it's gonna mount up here at the top and we file down with a bench grinder right here to go over that hump. And I completely sand it down and polish off the sides so that way there's no more sharp points on here. So now this thing can make contact with this frame right here and be completely flush. So now there's no more issues. When it's on there, it's not rocking back and forth. So whenever you go ahead and tighten it up, there is now zero break rub and I actually have room for adjustments. So I notify the customer, I say, hey, I really don't want to sand down your fork and go ahead and repolish it because that's a big cost or a, that's, that's, that could be an issue that could arise in my end. I go, this thing is literally 20 bucks. Let me go ahead and take the chance and mess around with this thing. It's nice and structurally sound. I have a bench grinder. Just let me go ahead and go ahead and zzz, zzz. It's not the prettiest looking thing, but once this thing's actually mounted on the bike, we're good to go. And I also told them that after this, I'm going to finish up with some black nail polish or some black paint I have here and go ahead and make it like a gloss black. So it just looks like a, an aesthetic proprietary adapter. But let me get this thing mounted onto the bicycle and I'll show you guys now that it literally has zero rub. And the customer, he told me, he's like, hey Grant, what's your professional opinion? What do you recommend I do? I said, hey, you should at least reach out to time and tell him about the situation. But I go, honestly, from this standpoint, uh, there's no issue. Uh, this this is not going to break. This is not this is not compromised by any means. Um, this sorry about the focus. Hold on one second. This is not compromised by any means. It's still very strong, very stiff, very structurally. We're in South Florida. We're completely flat. We're 140 rotors. It's not a big deal, um, and it works completely fine. The brakes feel amazing, and there's no more rubbing there. So I said, if it was my bike, I'd leave it. It's up to you. If it's your bike, you know we can go ahead and go through the process of getting new forks and out. And uh, he said he's happy with it. So. We're gonna leave it as is. Let me go ahead and mount this onto here and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so before I mount this brake back on here, this is the area in question that you can look from behind. There's nothing that you would even give away from it. It just looks like wherever they bonded the fork to actual like the metal through axle right here, uh, where the fork meets right here, that maybe you just had like a little bit of extra carbon fiber drip, like you said, and a little bit of sanding and polishing over that would be fine. Or I just modify the bracket, like I said, myself um, to go for it. And again, I'm sure time, if he goes ahead and calls them up because he's purchased the frame directly with them, they will go ahead and handle this without questions asked. Um, these type of things happen in every single industry. I've seen it on every single brand out there from Specialized to Trek to Pinarello. Um, I have customers that bring me issues all the time. And that's why I always, I'm not the type of guy to go ahead and, and do these massive YouTube videos where it's like, oh, there's an issue with this bicycle. I'm just showing you guys a little feature because like time is so recognizable and to show you that sometimes there are mistakes made. Um, in this world, things will go wrong and it matters how that company goes ahead and fix it. And uh, yeah, just, just sh showing you guys two sides of every single story. And um, I have no relationship with time, but the two little DMs and Instagram messages back and forth were really pleasant. And I'm sure that uh, the customer is very happy about the bicycle. So let's go ahead and mount this up. And there you guys have it where it's mounted on. Now, it's not the prettiest. Obviously, if you know it's there, you're going to stare at it. And obviously I'm gonna uh, match it up with like a little bit of black polish on there, but literally from the side, you wouldn't even recognize it. So for those perfectionists out there who say, oh, I have a brand new bike, I want this taken care of. Obviously, yes, they're gonna take care of the situation. But in the real world where this situation happens a lot, like I said, I get these situations to happen all the time. And yes, there's these videos to be made and, and companies need to be held accountable, but also to a certain standpoint as well, it's a bike shop. This customer is really excited to come get this bicycle. He lives very far away. He's been waiting all weekend or all week. He's actually been on vacation. He's coming to pick up this weekend. And uh, I was like, hey, man, I ran into this issue. I'm like, one, you get a call time, get a replacement fork, wait for it, come on in, we'll fix it for you. Or two, I can pretty much fix it. And he's like, whatever you feel is more comfortable. I'm like, he, he wanted the bike this weekend. So he's like, he's like, go ahead and do your thing. I fix it. I'm like, yo, you're good to go. Now that you guys are here, no disparate rub at all. And we're back in business and we're good to go. So he is definitely excited. And uh, yeah, so anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you again so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, go ahead and leave a like, leave a comment down below, and let me know what you guys think. Uh, what would you do in this situation? Would you wait for a new fork, or would this be good enough for you? Me, personally, I'll be fine with it. It wouldn't bother me at all. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.